welcome to those who are doing this on catch up. Well done for making the time to get to your mat, to take some time to restore, to rest, to revitalize, to reconnect, to recoup, however you want to put it that you have made the time to be here. So we'll give it a couple of moments um, just to see if anyone is jumping on for the live. We should be good to go. Just Always got to check these tech things, hey? Um, we just give it a few moments to see who's joining live. So those of you doing this and catch up, uh, you could always forward a little bit if you want to get straight to the practice. Um, just checking that sound and image are all good. Prativa, hello, welcome, welcome. Lovely to see you here. I'm really looking forward to this evening's session. It's a long time coming. I feel like I haven't been here for some time, so it's good to be back here on the Oh My Globe platform. Hey Tay, welcome everyone. Okay, cool. I think we are good to go. We're going to give it a couple more moments just to see if anyone else is joining on for the live. Hey Gobs. Hi Sarah. Welcome everyone. Um... As you can see, I've got two bolsters back there. Um, you can also use some cushions if you don't have a bolster, so you're going to need that. Um, so just getting your props ready. I set up my fairy lights. Um, we are in load shedding. <laughs> um, so it's actually really nice and cozy. I had my heater on. Hi, Neil. Hi, Wendy. Welcome, everyone. Um, I had my heater on a little earlier, so the room is nice and warm. So I suggest, while we still wait for a minute or two, hi, Roxy, welcome, um, that you maybe set your space up a little more. If you want to light a candle, please feel free to grab, if you're in the Western Cape, I don't know how the rest of South Africa is doing or the rest of the world. I know it's quite hot in Europe, but if you're in the Western Cape, Grab your blankets. <laughs> Normally in yoga, I would say take your socks off. But for this practice, please feel free to keep your socks on. I know I'm going to. Um, we're going to move very gently, very slowly, longer holds. And something to keep in mind and remember in your restorative practice is that your body wants to be fully supported. So get all those cushions, as many as you will need, so that the body really feels that it can 100% relax. Tanil, PE is freezing. Oh, it is. I don't know if it's colder there or if it's colder here, but it is super cold here in, um, in Vermont. I did, however, go for a swim on Sunday, which was lovely. Sun was barely out, but the wind had died down a bit, which does help. So first time in my life, I'm doing winter swimming and it's a game changer and it's really, really lovely. So Swimming in the ocean, one of the things I have in my toolbox for my nervous system, like restorative yoga, which we are about to start. Um, 7.5k hike, well done, Kath. I mean, you just never cease to amaze. Let's get going, everyone. And we're actually going to start standing. So I know when you think restorative yoga, you might immediately think, oh, we're just going to lie down. But I really, before I move into my restorative shapes, I always like to give my body a bit of movement first, especially if you've been sitting at a desk all day, if you've been traveling in a plane or in a car or in a train, um, to give your body a little bit of movement. Lymphatic drainage work works really well with the nervous system. Um, release with uh, restorative yoga, it's a beautiful pairing. So that's what we're gonna start with this evening. Some lymphatic drainage. All right, so to start, I'd like for you to place the feet a little wider than hip distance. And this is all about softness. I call this lazy lymph work. So you want your knees to be bent, gently bent, almost like they're like your little suspenders. Your feet, I want you to rock side to side a couple moments here. Feel that your toes are not gripping onto the mat, but rather that there's a little bit of give and your toes become your little balances. And you can almost feel that already the massage feeling into the feet. So what this does is our lymphatic system works like our cardiovascular system. 
except that it doesn't have a heart. So it's also liquids moving through the body, but because it doesn't have a heart, it needs movement to move. It moves up through one-way valves, up the legs and into the arms to all the lymph nodes where it then gets processed and um, helps the body to remove toxins and is also, also plays a massive role in our immune system. All right, so that's very important. What we're gonna add on here is some movement with the arms and some twisting through the spine. So you could keep your feet quite grounded here as you just get used to this feeling. Moving side to side, I'd like for your arms to be as relaxed, as floppy as you can get them. So again, I call this lazy lymph work. We want the heart rate to stay very low. If you feel like you might get dizzy moving more than this, then please feel free to stay as you are. What I'd like you just to do is just to gently do transference of weight from side to side, nothing big just so that the feet aren't gripping down. All right, some of us might start to make the movements a little bigger. And you might even allow the heel to lift as you move side to side so that the knee follows the movement of the hip. The gaze can also move side to side, so you could be moving head, looking right, looking left. And then another important part of our lymph work or any yoga style work for that matter, is our breath. So the inhale is through the nose, and then a big exhale through the mouth. So you could either just sigh the breath out, or a really effective way of stimulating the lymphatic system is through a little more activation in the exhale. So we'll add an SH sound, so it's in through the nose, or whatever the case may be, anything outside of yourself, just put that aside right now. This is our time. Are we back? All right, so if we do lose connection, then please just keep going with whatever we're doing. Even if we're in a pose, I'll pull you back out <laughs> as soon as the connection comes back. Otherwise, you're just gonna keep going. So we're gonna go a little longer here. Keep pushing out that exhale. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. And deep breath in. And as I was saying, checking in with yourself, noticing how you feel without any type of judgment, without trying to problem solve or find a solution right now. Simply allowing yourself to just feel what you feel. Allow yourself to just be. And then surrender over to this practice and let the practice do its medicine. So you've done all you need to do by just showing up, by simply being here. And now the practice does the rest. Let's take about five more deep breaths in and out. could even close for these last rounds. All right, and then if the eyes are closed, they'll open. Allow the body to relax very naturally. And bring yourself back into your equal standing pose. Let's reach the arms up, inhale. And then taking your forward fold here, you're gonna bend your knees a lot. 
Bring yourself into that forward fold. Bend your knees as much as you need to to give the spine as much length as you can. You can hold onto your opposite elbows and just pause in this inversion for a moment. So if at any time being fully upside down is too much, simply keep the knees bent, bring your elbows onto the thighs, come more into a diagonal spine, less vertically down. So that the head isn't completely upside down. But if you're loving being upside down, we'll stay for a few more breaths here. Doesn't have to be completely static. You could sway a little side to side if that feels good. Really just having a, an inquisitive nature when it comes to your time on your mat. But from a place of observation, Remember, this is something that we do for ourselves and not to ourselves. This practice is something you're doing for your body and not to your body. We are putting back in, we are filling our cup, and we're letting go of any stress and tension in the mind, in the body, in the heart. Just let it ooze out with every exhale. And then on your next exhale, release the arms down. Bend the knees a lot, press into the feet and roll the spine all the way up to stand. As you come up to stand, take a nice big loop of the shoulders. All right, we're gonna move down to the floor, which is where we'll be for the rest of the practice. I'd like for you to reach for your bolster or your cushions. Our first pose, will be a supported child's pose. So big toes to touch, knees apart, and you're going to bring your balls or your cushions right in between the legs. Just before I fold forward, I just want to show those of you who struggle with flexion in the knees in this posture, you could sit in your butterfly pose, bringing the soles of the feet together. So we're still getting an opening of the hips and a, a lengthening of the lower back, you're just avoiding that deep knee flexion. And then you might need to build up your props a little more. All right. Otherwise, you're bringing yourself forward, resting the torso on your pillow. Build your tower as high as you need it. And then I'd like you to lift your elbows, allow the chest to relax down. Bring the arms out in front of you and rotate your thumbs out, your palms up. And you're going to look over to your left. So resting the right side of the head, on the bolster, and the eyes can close, and you're just going to let the whole body relax here. So see if you can fully give your body down to the ground. I'm feeling the opening through the hips, the lower back. As we feel the bigger parts of the body release and relax, can you bring your focus perhaps a little more to the smaller part? So starting to feel the subtle energies of the body that might feel stuck or stiff. So for instance, can you relax your forehead? You make sure that the eyelids are relaxed and soft over the iris. And then importantly, separating top and bottom jaw, so top teeth and bottom teeth are apart. And then relaxing the tongue down away from the roof of the mouth. And feel free to yawn as much as you like in each pose. I really encourage that. And if the body does start to yawn, it's a signal to you that you're moving into your parasympathetic nervous system which sounds like a big word, but what that really is, is our rest and digest system of our nervous system. So this is the state in which our body heals and restores, in which it rests and digests. And that's really where we want to take ourselves, not only on our mats, but we want to try and invite more of that into our lives. Right, 
from here. Simply change to look over to your right. And then again, just settle the head onto your props. Maybe again, lift the elbows for a moment. Make sure there isn't that pressing down, that resistance of the arms to the earth. But rather a surrender of the body down to gravity. And soften the belly, soften the hips, soften the ankles and the feet. I'm going to stay here a little longer so just keep yourself nice and relaxed again eyes are heavy can you feel the eyes relaxed in the eye sockets Let's take three more breaths here to make sure we don't rush our second side. And after your third breath, bring the head back to neutral. Bring the body up. From here, you're going to take your props all the way to the front of your mat. Bring yourself to lie down on your belly and we're moving into what we call our Sphinx Pose. So your elbows will be underneath your shoulders. Your legs can be hip distance. You're on the tops of the feet. Readjust the pelvis and then slide the shoulder blades down the back body, almost like you're trying to avoid the crunching of the neck but rather lifting up out of the shoulders. Palms are gently spread, fingers gently into the mat. And then from here, you're going to want something under your forehead. So the head is going to start to relax down. And as you lower the head, you'll feel that the chest not only lowers, but also feels like it's being pulled forward. And so this posture is a really beautiful counter pose for the everyday action of rounding. When we're at our computers, when we're driving, when we're cooking, when we're working at a desk, when we're carrying things, when we're standing in a queue. So very good for our posture. Very good for thoracic spine. And also quite nice for the digestive system as you can feel that the belly is being pushed into the mat and as you breathe, the digestive organs feel a little bit of pressure from the ground but also the diaphragm, so the muscle in the body that helps us to breathe. When you breathe in, that muscle moves down, it puts pressure on the lower organs and so you're actually stimulating your digestive system by giving it an internal massage. So you might even tune in a little deeper here. Your internal sense of interoception, our ability to feel what's going on inside our bodies. All right. I'm going to raise the head up. Again, lift up out of the floor. This might be enough for you to stay here for a few more breaths. If you want to go a little deeper, hands are going to move wider out to the side. You're gonna press into the hands, raise the elbows, lift a little taller, but again, shoulders aren't crunching up, shoulders are relaxed down. 
You should be able to easily glide the head to look to the right and the left. One more breath. And then a little transition here, you're going to lower halfway down, bring the hands under the shoulders and press up onto the knees. So you'll need to place your prop to the side for now. And then just in between the static postures, let's do a little bit of movement. So into our cat cow. Your cow pose, you're going to tuck your toes under, lift the chin, lift the sit bones, inhale. And then into what we call our cat, which is a rounding shape. Press the tops of the feet into the floor, draw navel to spine. Tuck your chin and tuck your tailbone. Should feel quite nice after that sphinx pose. Let's just do three more like that. Inhale, cow. And exhale, cat. Inhale, cow. And exhale, cat. Last one, inhale, cow. And exhale, cat. And into a neutral spine. We're going to make our way down onto our bellies again. And we're going to move into one of my favorite restorative postures, which is our flopping fish. So how this looks, the right arm is going to move out to the side. Your right elbow is bent to 90 degrees. It's in line with your right shoulder, right wrist in line with right elbow. The left arm is going to release next to you, palm facing up. So the left hand will be next to the left hip. Going to look to your right, bend your right knee as well, bringing your right knee in line with your right hip. Right ankle moves out to that right knee at 90 on the inside of that right ankle. And then the head can rest down. If it feels like the head is hanging a lot here, you might place a cushion under your head. Going to be here for quite some time. So really make sure that you're comfortable. And then when you found that comfort in the shape, the eyes are going to close. And you're simply going to allow the body to rest completely. So you want the body to be as still as possible, but if you need to move and adjust to be more comfortable, then please do that. There's nothing worse than holding a pose for a long time and being uncomfortable or irritated or in agony throughout the whole pose. Rather adjust and allow the body to be comfortable in the shape. through the practice, just allow the breath to move naturally in and out of the body. If you notice that it starts to become a little faster, maybe slow it down a bit. And then we'll switch sides. So to switch, you're going to raise your head Extend your right leg down. Extend the right arm next to you, palm facing up. Bend the left elbow out to the side. Bend the left knee out to the side. Resting on the top of the right hip, right knee, right foot. And resting the right side of the head onto the floor. Again, take a few moments here to adjust as you need. And then again... As we did in the previous shape, you're trying to find a stillness. And let the body be unmoving on the outside, but you can still feel very much the movement internally. 
If that movement comes in the shape or form of a busy mind or thoughts, simply keep bringing the attention back to the breath. Bringing the awareness back to sensation in the body. And taking a moment here to really listen to what it is your body has to say. One of my favorite sayings is, listen to the body whisper before you have to hear it scream. Our bodies are always communicating us, communicating with us. Whether it's something as simple as we're hungry, or we need to go to the loo, or we're tired, or perhaps something a little more complex. Our body's telling us that we're out of balance, that we're lacking something in our system, that we're overworked or overstrained or fatigued. The body will always communicate. And it really takes slowing down to be able to hear those messages, to be able to feel that communication come through. We're going to come back to center, so bring the head back again as we did on the first side, extend your left leg now. We're going to move into a little shoulder stretch, so we're going to open the right arm out to the side, press into your left hand and start to roll onto the right hip. So this might be enough for you, you might simply stay here, just on the right side of the body with that right palm facing down. Some of you might feel that it feels good to place the left foot behind you. And you could even take the left arm to wrap behind you. But again, this practice is not about trying to find the deepest pose or the most complex shape or push your body in any way, shape or form. This is finding the shape that feels that it's going to nourish you the most. to come out we reverse left hand down left leg down roll onto the belly place the right hand flat left arm out to the side and you're going to press into that right hand to roll onto that outer left hip again you might stay here that might be more than enough for you today otherwise finding a similar shape to what you did on the first side Honoring that our sides are most likely very different. Our bodies can be very asymmetrical. So you won't find an identical shape to your first side. We're just trying to work in a little more balance between both sides. Last two breaths or so here, can you relax your left leg? And then again, we'll reverse to come out. Right hand down, right leg down, and then rolling onto the belly. Bring both hands either side of the ribs. Press up onto your knees, and as we did earlier, 
Moving just through a few rounds of movement here, tucking the toes under as you inhale into your cow. And then untucking the toes into your cat. Two more like that. And do one more. All right. And you can bring yourself to sit down on your buttocks. Make sure you've got your props nearby. Just double checking something. All right. We're going to sit in our butterfly pose. So you'll have the soles of the feet together. If you did this earlier, you're just going to do it again with us. <laughs> and then you can bring either one um, prop or you might even use two. Give yourself a little more space, a little more support. I like to make the diamond of my legs a little bit longer here. Feels like it gives me more space to allow the lower back to reach forward. I like to bring my arms forward and like we did in the child's pose, rotate the palms up. That movement comes from the shoulders, so you'll feel if the palms are down, the shoulders tend to crunch up. If the palms are rotated upwards, there's a softening to the shoulders down. And so from here, as we did in our child's pose, you're going to rest on the left side of the face. Close the eyes and then we stay and simply rest and breathe. We're staying a little longer, so really see if you can soften maybe just 2% more. And slowly you'll change to look over to your left. Just watching that mind, if you start to go into stories, if you're going into replays of today or imagination of tomorrow, bring yourself back into the present moment. Head can come back to center, bring yourself up to sit. So moving slowly here, you can place your props to the side for a moment. And then we're going to take hands to outer thighs, 
bring the knees to draw up. So you can feel that the thigh bones are moving from an external rotation, so outwards, to a more neutral rotation. You're going to extend the legs out in front of you. So for some of us, this might feel very tight to try and straighten out the legs here. Especially if you do a lot of hard training, or if you're a runner or a cyclist, here I would suggest that you maybe bend the knees. You can even place a prop underneath the legs to give you a little more support so that you really feel that the pelvis is not leaning backwards. Your shoulders aren't past the hips, but rather that your shoulders are above the hips and in fact, we're going to lean forward. So here again, you could use your bolster, you could rest your arms over, simply rest the forehead on your cushions. If you've got flat legs, you might have a different set up for your props. I just want you to find a shape that's as comfortable as possible. When you're feeling the back line opening and the head is just relaxing down. So you could look over to one side. I'll call a little half time call if you aren't in a symmetrical shape with the neck. So either way, you could have the head straight down or looking over to your right or left. So if you're looking over to one side, you'll switch now to look over to your second side. Enjoy the last few breaths here. And then slowly the head can lift. And the body will come up. Again, just placing your props to the side for one moment. We're going to do a little set up now where you're going to bring yourself a little lower towards the bottom end of your mat and going to place your cushions or your bolster lengthways down your mat. It's going to support the whole spine. So for me, I like to use a second cushion or a bolster to perhaps just find a little bit of lift for the top end of that bottom pillow or bolster just to offer a little bit of lift for the head 
You'll have the bolster right against the lower back, but the bum will still be on the floor. And then you're going to lay your body down. Make sure that the head is resting and that the forehead is above the chin. So here there's a few options for the legs. If you enjoy the butterfly pose, you could take that. But then please place cushions underneath each of the thighs so that the legs aren't hanging in the air. You could also just keep the feet down on the floor, knees up to the sky. Or you could choose to extend the legs and just allow the feet to flop out. Going to take the arms out to the side, rotate the thumbs out, the palms up. Take the arms a little ways away from the side body so that the armpits and the lungs are open. You feel some space there. And the eyes will close and then really see now if you can let the body relax even deeper. Full release here. Full relaxation here. I'm going to stay a good amount of time, so letting this be an opening for the front line of the body. Maybe taking the deepest breath you've taken today. Before just allowing the breath to move back into its natural rhythm. Keeping a little tuck of the chin so the back of the neck is lengthening and it's so important that we open that back of the neck. Often we can crunch into that area where the skull meets the top vertebra into the neck and that's also the area where the brain moves through the brain stem and becomes the spinal cord. The spinal cord being the highway of our whole nervous system. So giving this space, this area, some space and some freedom can feel really, really good and very relaxing for the body. Enjoy the last moments of this shape. As you relax deeper into mind, into body, you might even start to hear or feel some action going on within the body. Maybe the tummy starts to make some noises or you could even feel some movement. Such a good sign that we're moving into our rest and digest state. To come out of this, if you're in butterfly pose, press your feet together, bring your hands to your outer thighs. Bring the knees up. If the legs are straight, bend the knees, bring the knees up. And then we'll all just roll over onto the side. Gently press yourself up. And then bring one of your bolsters or your cushions to the right side of your mat. And then really slowly ease your way back down. So everything we're doing is super slow. Please don't fling your body from side to side or rush from pose to pose. 
All right, from here, preparing for a twist. Our right leg is going to extend, left knee stays bent. And before we do anything else, I want you to place your hands on the floor. Keep your shoulders where they are. Press into your left foot, lift your hips, and take your whole pelvis a little to the left side of the mat. So it might feel a little skew here, but that will change once we twist. So you start to roll into your outer right hip. As you do, bend your left knee across to the right. That right hand can help to bring your right cushion or your right bolster under that left knee and that left foot. Right hand can either rest on top of the left thigh or out to the side and then left arm can extend all the way out to the side. So just as you need here, trying to keep weight in the shoulder blades, you can either look up or relax the head over to the right. So we're not going to take the twist through the neck this evening. You're simply going to twist to look over to your right. And close the eyes and fully relax. We'll just start to think of coming out here. So left foot will slide back onto the mat. Bend the right knee, place the right foot on the mat. Readjust the hips. Take the pillow over to the other side if you don't have pillows on the left. Extend left leg, press into right foot. Lift the hips, take the hips to the right and land on your left hip. And then as you do, take that right foot across Bring knee and foot onto your cushion. Left hand can either stay on the thigh and move out to the side. Right arm is extending out and you're either looking up or you're taking your head over to look to the left. And then just let both legs relax, both arms relax, head relax. Again, this side will start to think of coming out. Take your time. You'll bring both feet back down on the mat. Rearrange yourself. You could slide now for your Shavasana. You could slide one of your props or some of your cushions underneath the thighs. You could also place a cushion underneath your head. Maybe a blanket over your body as you take the arms out to the side, thumbs out, palms up, up, shoulder blades a little closer together, a little tuck of the chin, and then full resting shape for your Shavasana. Let the whole body feel completely relaxed.
Keep allowing yourself to relax a little deeper. Staying relaxed and present. Nowhere to go, nothing to do. You've done enough for one day. Let it go. Use the rest of this day to nourish yourself. To fill your own cup so that tomorrow you have something to give and share with the world. That you have energy and capacity to grace the world with your gifts. Use this time to connect a little deeper inwardly instead of seeking outside of yourself. And for your last couple moments here, can you take a deep breath in through the nose. Fill the lungs and hold the breath as if you're holding everything from today, everything from this week, everything from this month. And when you need to exhale, part the lips, take a big sigh out and let that all go. <sighs> Pressing it out of your space out of your system, out of your body. One more like that, inhale. And a big sigh out. And so remembering that by letting things go, by detaching from things doesn't mean they don't exist. It doesn't mean our lives will inst instantly be perfect. But what it does mean is that those things will not put us apart. Those things will not be able to break us down completely. We put up the barrier for ourselves, for our energy, for our wellness, physically and mentally, by choosing to let some things go. And when you're ready to move, it can be in any way you like, just nice and slow, maybe a full body stretch, maybe a nice little squeeze in. And when you're ready to come up to a sit, come up to a seat or to sit, slowly roll yourself up. Find a comfortable seated position. Bring the hands to the heart and close the eyes. Take an inhale and a breath out. Moments of gratitude to yourself for showing up, to your body for holding you on this planet, walking you through this world, being your instrument of expression and connection, of taste and touch and sight and smell and the full human experience and gratitude to the practice of yoga, its lineage and all its teachers. Final breath in together. And a big sigh out. And when you're ready, the eyes can open. Thank you so much for joining. If you're doing this on catch up, well done for making some time to get to your mat. If you've got any questions, feel free to reach out to me to free, to feel free to reach out to Tay, who manages the Oh My Glow account. She's here right now, so if anyone has any questions here on the live, 
please feel free to drop that in the comment section. And let me know how you're feeling after that. I hope you're feeling super relaxed and maybe a little restored, a little reconnected. Um, I can highly encourage that after doing some lymph work and restorative practice, that you continue to take the rest of the evening really slowly. Um, that you drink some water, some tea, try to stay away from the screens, things that are going to stimulate you again. Don't check in on those emails tonight. You're done for the night. This is Oh My Glow and Kathleen giving you permission to take the night off. Um, oh, Katie, such a pleasure. So relaxed and ease. Yay. I'm so glad that you enjoyed that, babes. Um, Sarah, feel restored. Wonderful. Sarah, so glad you enjoyed that. Um, to Neil, so lovely having you here. I'm glad you made it. Uh, Prativa, always, always good to see your name and I know you love your yoga. So, so, so happy to have you all here. Thank you so much for joining. Please let me know if you have any questions. Um, these practices can be done, the poses can be held for even longer when you're in restorative. So you can like really bolster yourself up. If you're going to hold it for longer, you want to make sure that you're fully propped up. So I would like increase the um, increase the pillow usage, <laughs> hashtag disciple, oh God, love you my babes, thanks for being here, um, and the lymph work is beautiful to do, I think any time of the day, but a really great time to do it, I've got my mascaras all smudged from my eyes being all teary from all the yawns, um, I yawn as much in these restorative practice when I teach them as the people who do them, it's so lovely, um, the lymphatic work is really nice to do first thing in the morning. So it's a beautiful stimulating practice, it flushes the body, it energizes the body, um, and it brings you into a state of being awake and energized, but also being calm and focused. So I think there's a difference that sometimes people think if I want to start my day, like, you know, get things done, that it needs to be like a ha 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 and a hustle and a da 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 da, whereas I find it quite the opposite. I feel like, oh, what if I wake up slowly? What if I wake up calmly? What if I have a cup of tea, do some yoga, and then sit down with that mind, with a yoga mindset and look at my emails? What if my first business call is done with a yoga mindset? Um, it really changes things. So I hope you all enjoy that practice. I see my mom's here. Hi, mama. <laughs> um, yeah, wishing you all a beautiful evening's rest. As I mentioned, if you can, maybe even a bit of noble silence tonight, limit the conversations, um, limit the screen time and give yourself a night off. Thank you so much for having me on my glow. Thank you for presenting and helping or asking me to present this beautiful practice. Um, it's such, a, such an honor to share on your platform um, because so many of our values are aligned Oh My Glow is also all about self-love, self-care, self-appreciation. Um, and also the, you know, what this practice shows very much is that we're also individual um, and that we all need individual care in unique ways. So just such a privilege, such an honor to, to do this work. And I'm wishing you all a beautiful evening again. <laughs> Let me go. Otherwise, I'll chat to you forever. Much love. Feel free to drop any of us a DM if you have any questions. And I hope to see you all soon. Have a beautiful evening. Bye.